Hey everybody, it's your man Tight coming to you with another true spook story. Now before I begin, I want to ask that you hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and share me with your friends and families if you think it's not robbery. On the come up note, how y'all doing? Y'all ready for this? Let's do it. Dun, 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 dun. I'm cheesy today. I'm j I just heard some good news, people, and I'm just so happy. I'll be sharing it with you, probably getting a recap. All right, so without further ado, let's get into this thing. So this story is going to take place here in Orlando, but in the Kissimmee area. Yeah, for those of you guys that's not too familiar with Florida, uh, Kissimmee is, is, a, is a very Hispanically populated place. Also, it's, close to, it's the closest city to Disney World itself. Uh, celebration and all that good stuff. It's just a ritzy celebration. It's ritzy, upper echelon. Then you got Kissimmee, which is normal working folk, city people. But so this story is going to take place in the Kissimmee area of Florida. So back in the day, there was this dude. We used to call him Randolph. Uh, we used to call him like Randolph and Mortimer from the old Eddie Murphy uh, trading places fucking TV show, that little movie came out with Eddie Murphy, had to switch places with the white dude, Dan Aykroyd, and shit like that. So we used to call him Randolph and Mortimer because he was always, this dude was always into some innovative engineering, money-making type scheme. 100% money-making type shit. So, and he, and he was a Hispanic cat that lived in uh, Kissimmee and used to screw this girl named Jessica from St. Cloud. So he was so, you know, I'm, I'm out there dope boying it up a little bit. I'm getting my shit together. You know, I'm on the dope circuit selling dope, you know, trying to deal with the Hispanic population, even though I ain't speak a lick of Spanish. But you know, uh, money is green and, and conversation don't talk, don't, don't mean shit as long as you got that paper. So Randolph Mortimer, he used to always come at me and be like, hey, Ty, I got a, I got a new way to, do, to cook up some dope, man. I got a new way to cook up dope. And I'm like, what you mean a new way to cook up dope? And he like, I'll, I'll, I'll be over there. I'll be over there, man. We, we're going to learn about this shit. And he'll kiss the sky. Is it the part that better and talk all that, that Spanish shit that I ain't understand at the time? So I'm like, okay, cool. I say, this bitch on another little trip. So this was around by Halloween of uh, year. I say this was around by Halloween of year 20... Yeah, 2010, 2009, Halloween 2009. So he comes over to the crib and he's like, hey, I got the stuff, let's cook. So he pulls out the, this bag of cocaine, man, look like a fucking key. And he starts boiling it, baking soda, we making the shit. So then all of a sudden he got some gunpowder, like he had some nine millimeter bullet shells and he started pulling the top of them bitches off. Dumping them in now, dumping them in the in the mix, and I'm like, "What the fuck you doing, man?" And he said, "Oh, in South Africa they do this shit, man. They they snort cocaine with 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 gunpowder and and shit." And I said, "No, no, 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 no." I say, "But you finna cook crack, and it needs to be heated." I say, "This is an explosion." He, no, no, man, no. Man. Once we cook it down, the gunpowder is inert. I mean, he had a great vocabulary. He like, it is a nerd, man. It's, it's just going to be the most cool shit, man. And he was like, yeah, it's called firing. I say, well, you on your own. So again, he dumped the gunpowder in the, in, the, in the mixture and let it cook up. Kept swirling it, slowly cooking and start crystallizing. He laid it on this special spot on the floor that had, I mean, this bit, this part on the floor just was gravity central. It flattened out the cookie, baby. Chopped it up so we had crack cocaine mixed with gunpowder, people. The fuck? going on here so he like yeah let's go get let's go get the running man to try it let's get steve i'm like no nah, man these steve where the fuck he at you know because i like steve and grandma likes steve and he like we gotta find somebody so he went on orange blossom trail picked up some little hookup some little hole whatever and he had her try the gunpowder out it didn't explode but she was like she it kept tasting like it was plastic at first and then she just like kept passing out. Like she would, like every time she would hit it, she was 
do a crazy little step and stand and she'll be like, it tastes like plastic, it just faint on the ground. So he was like, this the good shit and everybody wanted it. So me and him started cooking this shit up on a regular basis, people. On a regular basis, we just kept cooking this shit up and we making good cheese. I mean, I'm making good money. So, you know, me and him stopped talking for like three, four months because I don't know where he was getting this coke from. But, you know, he had to, you know, re-up because we had cooked all that shit and sold it all. So we ain't talked to him about two, three months. Then he come back. Dude, I got another, I got another motherfucking innovative way to do shit. And he was like, yeah, I'm sick and tired of fucking people dying from crack and, and the teeth falling out and the bone density. He had some old scientific shit going on, people. I, I'm telling you, I can't make this shit up if I try. So he said, dude, let's try to make them healthy because a healthy crackhead is a great crackhead. And I'm like, what you talking about? This motherfucker went and when he would start cooking crack, people, he was cutting up echinacea root, blending it up. I mean, he was blending up echinacea, uh, the citrus powder. He was putting all kind of herbs in the crack cocaine and he cooking that shit up. And I'm like, fuck me. So this is what he was doing. So I'm like, okay, cool. And he was calling the shit like the health high. This is a healthy high. So again, we got people testing this shit. Go get the running man. I man, leave Steve alone, bitch. So he go and get somebody off of OBT and Kaylee and have them do it. And the, and the lady at the time I was standing right there beside him, she was like, damn, my sinuses done open up. Ooh, I can breathe. And she just started coughing up shit out of her lungs and choking and hacking up mucus and shit. And she did that shit for like five, 10 minutes. And then she hit that stem again. And when she hit that stem that time, she was like, man, this bitch tastes so good, I can breathe. And he was like, see, I told you. So guess what? We sold out of that shit. All the jugs and all the crackheads walking around OBT and Kayla looking healthy as fuck. I mean, just 100% smelling better, looking better, muscle fibers coming up, skin getting tight. So the niggas had stumbled on to something. So again, we didn't fuck with each other for a good two, three months after we sold out of that, making good money. So I'm chilling, nah, I done got me a little job and I'm just doing the right thing, trying to work. You know, I ain't trying to go to jail. They had, that's when they had start installing cameras on OBT and Kaylee and 18th Street in that area here in Orlando. And you know, when you go to Kissimmee, you have to go through South Chase and all that shit and they'll track your vehicles right there when you get into the South Chase. Uh, mall, they hit your tag automatically and register how many times you come to Kissimmee. That's a thing, people. I'm, I'm putting you on game, dope boy. So he come back and he's like, dude, I got another experiment I want to try and all this shit. I'm like, okay, what we finna put in the bitch now? We, now, we done tried gunpowder. We done tried healthy motherfuckers. Bitch, you can't get no more than that. He said, dude, let's put dead people in it. So I'm like, what? Bitch, you got your mind. You got to be crazy. So I'm like, this nigga want to cook dead people, put it inside cocaine, cook it down into crack rock, and serve it to people. And I'm sitting there like, this nigga done lost his motherfucking mind. So he came back with, like, copper stones on his ass, crystals, and he was all spiritual, crystal, religious, and... Sent the real beads and shit on his arms and shit. And we, okay, this nigga done jumped into some spiritual shit. Okay, cool. You know, I say, so how you gonna get a dead nigga, man? I say, I ain't killing nobody for you, bitch. I say, we ain't into that. He like, no, we just break into the cemetery and rob the graves of the corpses, grind them down to powder and boom, voila, they're in the dope. Now, people, I'm gonna stop it right there. Now, I'm putting you up on some shit. This is my life now. This is what I went through. So I seen the cat break into the cemetery. I seen him take the time to dig up a grave way in the back of the cemetery. I ain't gonna say the cemetery because I don't know if that shit still chargeable by defense. So I told so he go and break in the cemetery. He dig up the motherfucking skulls and the bones and shit. And he said he was with a group of people who were doing this. And if you check the news now, so you'll know this shit real. I'm going pinpoint. There was a bunch of... Uh, Hispanic people that was digging up body parts to use for rituals in Kissimmee, Florida, uh, Sarasota, um, uh, Winter Garden, all of them, they were digging it up and they got arrested on the news for that type of shit. Well, he was with that ring and he was digging them up to grind the bones down and shit to use it and put it in, in crack cocaine, you know, for some kind of religious, spiritual purposes. 
So he come back with a bunch of old bones and shit. He rents some mold for however. He let them sit in the sun two, three days till they bleach out and dry. And the bitch get the blender. He blending up shit. I'm seeing powdered bones from humans and shit, right? So I say, what this bitch finna do now? You know, and I'm looking crazy. So just like he cooked regular coke, he was measuring that shit out teaspoon by ounces. He was cooking the crack with the human remains inside of it. And I'm like, fuck me, man. So he like, hey, go get Running Man. I said, God damn it, why you keep fucking with Running Man? Let Steve Long. And I'm pissed. And he like, well, we got to get somebody. So then one night we go down on OBT and we find this old dread, old Jamaican dude, long dreads, no shirt, booger in his nose, no shoes, sweaty, shiny and shit, glistening at nighttime. It, it, he just, he just was fucked up. No draws with, I mean, he just fucked up. So I say, hey man, you want to make your little dollars? I say, test this product. I say, you finna get high, test this product. And he was speaking all kind of crazy gibberish before he even took the dope, right? So I'm thinking this bitch finna lose his fucking mind. I don't know what kind of hank of spirit inside this crack cocaine and whatever. I don't know. Man, he was like, you motherfucker, I see you. The pepper, the, the pepper bull. And he was talking about all that shit. I just remember him kept talking about stocks and bonds, paper bulls and Christianity and Jesus Christ, the son of this. He said his name was Christopher fucking Thomas. Could you believe that? My parents named me Christopher fucking Thomas. He used to always say that type of shit. So we didn't think his name was Christopher Thomas. Who knew? So we 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 parked the we parked the Chevy and we say, man, here. So we park it in the cut. He hit the he put it on the stem, hit the bitch, boom. Put it on the stem, hit it. And all of a sudden, this motherfucker started speaking Spanish. The Jamaican dude started speaking Spanish. And I say, dude, what the fuck this man saying? He like, he's talking about how he's mad at us for disturbing his grave. I say, I ain't disturb shit. And he kept looking at, at, at uh, Mortimer. And he just kept looking at Mortimer like, you disturbed my grave. So every time he would hit the crack that was made with the dead people, he would go in the trance. And I guess the bone of the dead person who grave Mortimer robbed were coming through in the crack because of heat inhalation. So think about like Vicks Vapor Rub and you it opening up all your sinuses or the Oracle gas is seeping out. So that type of shit. So he just kept on saying, he kept saying disturbing his grave. He want to go back to the grave and all that stuff. And, and he stopped speaking his Jamaican language. And he was like, I need to get back. I need to get back. So he ended the dude like, where the fuck you going? Come back here, bitch. You need to tell us how you feel taking it. And he was like, I don't care about this poison. And he was like that type of shit. But he's saying all this shit in Spanish. The dude translating. So he like, I got to get back. I got to get back. So he ain't have no money for no cab or no city bus to get there. And it would have took about two hours to get to Kissimmee anyway. Where they got the bodies and shit from. So he just started walking up OBT. And if you walk straight up OBT, you can get to Kissimmee just by walking straight up OBT. It's going to take you a minute. But that's how you get there. So he just started walking. So we like, yeah, that nigga crazy, man. Fuck him. He on his leg. Now, we still let him. We gave him enough dope that he could be hitting this shit for, for about a day or two. Because we dropped it in the stem, man. We gave him a little, a little 50 piece, you know, and they chip it off. So we never saw the dread again. So we started selling the dope to the people over there on 18th Street, 19th Street, you know, OBT, Trailblazers. Everybody felt like they had a trance, but here's the fucked up part about it, people. Everybody over there was very much in control of their faculties. They was talking proper. Some of them was speaking with a Spanish accent. Some of them was starting to clean themselves up, get off drugs. They didn't want to do drugs no more. It's like they had got a mental awareness. You know, we would go to the store and they would be cleaning up the store and telling and arguing with the store, the little Arabs and Muslim shopkeeps. Don't treat us like this. Fix our shit up. Fix our shit up. You shouldn't do this. And I'm like, nigga, you were just sleeping and pissing in the corner, dropping your cigarettes and soda. Now you're telling the man how to do. These people wasn't themselves because they were smoking this type of dope that Mortimer had done. So Mortimer like, this shit is a success. So Mortimer was like, let's go get some more corpses. And I'm like, bitch, one thing I don't do, I ain't fucking with dead people in the cemetery. He like, nah, nah, we got this. We got this. My people got it. 
I just need your spot to cook it at. I said, all right. And you know, I had a bando and shit. So I was like, cool. I'm making money. I'm making like six grand uh, uh, every week when they come over here just to cook and our shit. And, you know, I I'm cool. I'm cool, bitch. I ain't selling it. I'm just making the money watching you do the do. So now, this was the fucked up part about it now. That wasn't the creepy part. That was just the backstory, people. Now, I'm finna give y'all some real shit. And you can judge me if you want to after this shit. I don't give a fuck. But this is real life, and you got to understand what I'm saying here. Because this shit is going on every day. People need to hear about it. It's still going on to this day. You can't tell me it's not. I beg you to try to differ. <sighs> so one day, Mortimer... He had a, he had got another little dope dude. Uh, this dude came from like uh, East Colonia. That's where a lot of Hispanic population at too. The dude come from East Colonia and shit. So when he came from East Colonia, he was hanging out with him. So the dude ended up hanging out with Mortimer, and Mortimer tried to scam somebody. I don't know how that shit worked. So we, a suit a shootout ensued. The little the young cat that Mortimer was with that got from um. East, East, East Colonial area, Cimarron, dude got shot, boom, hit in the throat, boom, hit in the head, nigga dead. So, I'm, I'm hoping to hear this on the news, right? I don't hear none of this shit on the news. So, Mortimer had called his little Spanish buddies who was into that shit, the corpse robbing and stealing. Motherfucker set up there and took the body. And I don't know what they did. They probably dismembered the bitch. I'm speculating at this point here. So I got to say that I'm speculating at this point here. So after they did it, Mortimer disappeared for a whole like two, three weeks. And the new, the shootout didn't even make the news. And I know that boy got killed, right? So all of a sudden, Mortimer come back with some more bones. Again, this is speculation, people. So don't judge. He come back with some more bones. And shit and skull and I mean damn near a whole goddamn bag of skeletons here. And he was like, come on, dude, let's cook some more of that shit up. It, we, we sold out. I got my reconnect and brought me another key. Bitch, let's make some money. We finna make about fifty thousand dollars. He just selling the shit. I'm like, cool. I said, you need this place to cook. I'm like, yeah, I need a place to cook. Now as so he goes in there, he bringing the powdered shit, man, and all that shit, and he mixing it up, he cooking it up in the kitchen and all that stuff. He landed on the safe, that's his favorite spot. He cutting that bitch up. We got cracking bags for days, for days, for days. He break me off my little seven grand, eight grand, and I'm like, cool. So he bag it up, call his boys, everybody bag it up. So now they hitting the street to go sell the shit. Now people, if you don't believe any motherfucking thing I say. On any of these videos you goddamn well better understand what I'm saying now the very first person he sold the crack to I remember that lady like it was yesterday she was a very dark-skinned woman about six two uh, very voluptuously built big titties big ass but she just always wore the skimpiest little thin t-shirt so you could see the nipple and the titty swing and she had on the Nasty as little black dirty shorts with some thin ass dollar store sandal. So she paid her money and she went round up to the back of the store off and off 19th Street, right there that little store. She went behind that bitch and she hit that dope. When she came back in front, and you know how they look on the ground and they start picking up cigarette butts. She came back and she was walking like a little dude, a young cat. She was dragging her legs and she was like a b-boy. She had that b-boy look and she wasn't no lady no more. She was the b-boy. And she was like, yo, fuck nigga. You tried me, B. You fucking set me up, B. You know what the fuck you were doing, B. And like, yo, and he was saying all that type of shit. That was the lingo back then. B and yo and Don and son. Yeah, son. Yo, fuck nigga, son. I should cap you right now, son. And he was saying all that shit. And I'm like, what the fuck wrong with this lady? So, you know me. I done sat in my motherfucking uh, the Chevy. And I'm like, okay. And I put my hand on my little piece. But listen, I don't know what's going on. Whatever you got going on with this bitch. Maybe you, you paid the hope for some pussy. I don't know. But the bitch come over here with the dumb shit. I'm going to thump her ass. And I'm going to thump you too. Just for GP. Because I got to get out of this situation. Man. The 
lady kept sliding over that torn. So I shut the door and I say, man, I'm finna go off. I'm finna be back. I'm finna run to grandma house right quick. Grandma lived right up the road on 19th street. He like, yeah, man, I'm up here slanging. Fuck that hoe. She, she crazy. She crazy. She just how I'm cracked. She ain't got no peace. So now he done sold crack to everybody because everybody was coming to him. He had good crack now. So now a lot more people smoking the dope. They coming back acting like that little boy again. They coming back acting like it. Yeah, done. Yeah, son. Yeah, B. Fuck you, nigga. You did me wrong, bitch. You set me up. You Jones. You Jonesing and shit. You set me up. Fuck you, nigga. And they just he just saying it all in that Spanish kind of Puerto Rican type slang, but he was speaking English with it. So I'm like, man, this is some bullshit. What's going on here? So I'm floating. So when I got back, he he called my cell phone. He like, hey, tight. Nigga, you need to get up here and get me. These crackheads trying to rob me. So, you know, I hop in the car. I'm like, man, they trying to rob Mortimer. Fuck this shit. So, Grandma say, where you going? I say, Mortimer in trouble. Why? What Mortimer doing? I say, he's selling dope up there, Grandma. She say, and now I know you in the dope game. And I ain't stupid. Your uncle, your brother, your cousin, you, you had to follow at one point. And she was like, well, I don't need you to get involved with him. I say, I've been fucking with Mortimer, man, like two years, Grandma. I say, we eating, Grandma. Not all money, good money. And she say, I sent some nasty about that boy. I say, he ain't got a soul. He ain't got a soul. That ain't no human in that body. I say, serious, Grandma? I say, you serious? She say, have I ever been wrong, bitch? I say, no, ma'am. Say, make this your last encounter with him. I say, yes, ma'am. So I float up there, Grandma, and as I'm pulling out Grandma driveway, you know, I see grandma shaking her head in her little nightgown. She had her hand on her hip, and I look in her right hand. She had her pistol on her. And she, because she was talking to me with the pistol, because she came out the room with the pistol. She had her pistol like she was shaking her head, looking at me like, mm -mm, I got to protect my grandbaby. She gave me that type of energy. Now I'm going to stop it right there, people, and I'm going to tell you guys what grandma did before I tell you what happened to Mortimer when I got up that to him. So grandma goes in the house and grandma puts on her robe and she gets in her car, she gets in the Buick and she float out there and she like right behind me, less than two minutes behind me. So grandma get up there, so I see grandma car pass mine. I say, where grandma going? I say, damn, I say 7-Eleven closed. It's about 12.30 at night. I say, where she going? No, I said, the corner store closed. She must be going to 7-Eleven on Gulf Street. I say, cool. So I say, well, grandma go and I go back to her house. Let me get this nigga home, get him out of danger, drop him off, and I just go stay the night at grandma house. So grandma beat me to the punch. I got stopped by the light on Caleb. Grandma shot through the light. Boom. Grandma goes up there to the store where Mortimer was being surrounded by these motherfucking people. Grandma pulled out the pistol and she just saw it thumping. Now, grandma fired five shots, I counted. So I'm like, damn, the jugs done killed Mortimer. I ain't know it was grandma till I got up there. So I turn up in the store and I look at Mortimer and Mortimer laying on the ground. He been hit five times, y'all. So I said, what's going on? I said, grandma, what Mortimer did? She said, baby, that's not a real man. That is not a human. Say, that is a demon in that body. I didn't kill no man. I killed the demon. So I say, Grandma, you killed the bitch, period, lady. He was trying to take my grandbaby. I ain't letting him fuck up nothing over here. And Grandma said to him, did y'all see anything? No, we ain't seen nothing, Grandma. So I said, okay. So I said, well, at least let me check the body. I said, the nigga had money and dope on it, Grandma. I said, I ain't finna just let the body go there. So I'm going over there to go in the nigga pockets, right? I go in his pocket, I'm pulling out stacks. Go in his other back pocket, I'm pulling out the bag with the crack in it. Now all the people that still possess with that young boy energy from smoking that dope with his bones and his body in it with that young energy. Yeah, B, fuck him, B. That nigga's a snake, they kicking him. That nigga's a snake, they kicking him. They standing out there throwing batteries on him and milkshakes and cups and beer dumping beer on the body, right? So all of a sudden I said, let me get grandma out of here. So we, man, grandma got about eight grand and I that we done got from him so we gonna leave the body there you know for a motherfucker to, to eventually they'll sit up there and say 
the jugs beat him up, killed him, robbed him, however, because wasn't nobody going to tell the story he had no cameras because it was full of legal activity. <sighs> Can't believe I'm telling this one. So, now when it came down to it, we like, okay, shit. So I'm like, Grandma, we done off this bitch. Because you know it's the we thing, because Grandma, we together on this bitch. We got to come up with something. So I say, Grandma, go on to the house. I say, act like you ain't do nothing. She said, I did it. I ain't killed nobody. And she was very adamant about that dude wasn't a human or he wasn't real, like it was another soul in his body. So I said, let me go back up there and see, can I pay these motherfucking people off for at least, you know, call the police and say that with my homeboy, make up a cover story, right? When I get up though, Mortimer's standing to his feet. Mortimer's standing to his feet like ain't shit happened. Mortimer in a whole motherfucking trance. Because Mortimer had been smoking his own product, people. Mortimer was smoking dope. This is why he was so invested in how the dope is made and shit and wanted to test it on Running Man Steve. So Mortimer had began smoking his own dope. So when Grandma went up there and Grandma put the bullet in his ass, Grandma knew she wasn't shooting a human. She was shooting a departed soul. So now I'm looking at him for blood, checking the body for bullets and shit, you know, because if you ain't dead, bitch, you're fitting to because grandma ain't going nowhere. We ain't putting grandma in prison. So I'm like, this nigga ain't got a scar on it. Ain't got a scar on it. He ain't even worried about the money. He walk around like a B-boy. Yo, what's up? What's up, yo? What's up, done? Shit good, B? And he give me them hard, them old heavy-handed ass handshakes and shit. You know how the Puerto Rican gangs do it and shit. All strong, man. Y'all say, bitch, y'all say, D didn't you just get shot? Nah, B, I got shot later in a, in a, in a, uh, he say, I got shot later in a goddamn shootout, B, I'm, but I survived that shit just like I survived this shit. Nothing can kill me. So I'm like, bitch, lift up your shirt. I say, lift up your shirt, Captain. No bullet holes in the bitch. Bullet healed. Motherfucker, impervious to fucking death, I'm assuming. So I say, shit, you good, nigga? He like, D, I'm fly. He say, I'm fly. He say, let me get off the rest of this dope. Then we gonna fly and go get some shit from the uh, from the Waffle House. Bitch, I could, give, I could use a goddamn steak right now. Put some sessons on that bitch. He saying all that kind of shit. I ain't even know what type of season that shit was until I got 40, y'all. So some kind of uh, season the Spanish people use that turn shit red when they cook it. So I'm like, bitch, if you cool, grandma cool. I say, grandma must have missed you. She just spooked him and you laid down on the ground. Cool. So, you know, shit got good. We get in the car. I'm looking at him sideways. I'm not echoing what grandma said. This ain't a real nigga in his body. This is a departed soul. And now he acting like the same boy he was bringing around us who got killed in the drive-by, who bones and shit. I think he used to make the new batch of dope. People will follow me. He'll follow me, god damn it. So I say, where you want to go, my nigga? Where you want me to drop y'all, pimp boy? Nah, man. Take me take me over there to Cimarron. I say, Cimarron? I say, bitch, it's late. <laughs> it's late. So I say, dude, it's like 1.32 in the morning. I say, my black ass is not going to Cimarron 1.2 in the morning, dropping off a Hispanic nigga. I still got to get out that bit. Ain't nobody going to fuck with you done. That's my shit. That's my area. I say, no, you live in Kissimmee, man. I bitch, I said you live right next to St. Cloud. B, take me over there. Fuck that shit. I said, all right. So I put my hand on my piece, drove his ass right over there. He get out the car right over there off of, uh, uh, like, by Lake Underhill Road. I remember that shit so well. It's a 7-Eleven right there by Lake Underhill Road. And uh, if you walk up a little bit more, it's a little skating ring for children. He say, B, I'll fuck with you later. Give me a couple days. And I call you. And like, cool. So people get this shit right here now. This shit that I had to make the paper. So he's walking up the motherfucking side of the road. He dropped him off on Lake Underhill. Walking up the side of the road. The bitch get run over crossing the street. Because right, right down Lake Underhill Road. I'm getting choked up saying this shit. Damn. <sighs> right off Lake Underhill Road the 408 exit right there so he was crossing the bitch and he got hit unbeknownst to me because he was trying to walk down there to the skate right over there in that area where them houses at 
This old dude got hit by a car right off Lake Underhill Road. So I ain't know he got hit. So I'm sitting at home in some cereal watching the news one night, chilling. They say X, Y, and Z. They gave his real name. X, Y, and Z got, you know, struck by a motorist. And they was like, I say struck by a motorist. X, Y, Z, Sunday night, yada, yada, yada. So I'm like, okay, sorry. So I, they kept saying the name, and I'm like, why the name sound familiar? So they flashed a the picture of him. Then they flashed a picture of the scene. So now I'm like, oh, the clothes matching up, pictures matching up. I say, that's Mortimer. So I'm like, what the fuck? So now, people, listen to what the news said. The news said it was like somebody threw a corpse out of a car, a body that had been dead for about three, four months. They say the body had uh, massive signs of decay like the body had been decaying for four, five, six months tops. They thought that the vehicle coming off of the 408 exit ramp like ran over a body that was already laying in the road and knocked it like about 50 feet away. And they said they couldn't charge the person who hit the corpse, not a person who hit the corpse. And they said, so they were looking for somebody. They were checking, like, the cameras to see that somebody let the dead man a dump a body over there on the road and somebody hit it. But people, listen to me good now. The nigga rode with me. He got out the car at his own accord, walking, talking. I dropped him off. I backed up. I bent it. I'm headed back up. Cimarron finna hit Colonial. Get the fuck out of the east side of town. Because at that time, black folk didn't go over there. You know, that time. Hispanic gangs will fuck you up. So, so I go to grandma. I said, grandma. I said, you know the dude you shot at? She said, I, I, I hope I got him. I said, look at the news. So grandma, we waiting on the news. Channel 9, 13 news, whatever it was. We looking at the news. And grandma say, that ain't the person I shot. I say, it ain't. I say, well, that's the person that was in my car. That's Mortimer. She's like, that ain't who I saw. She said, I saw a young nigga, and he ain't had no eyes or no soul. He was just an empty vessel. That's who I shot at. I say, well, did you know that he didn't die, Grandma? That you just missed him all the bullet? I don't miss when I shoot. Grandma don't motherfucking miss. I know how to shoot. Fuck that janky demon bitch. I said, all right, cool. I say, let it go, Grandma. So, you know, I ain't going to take away a fantasy uh, of protecting a grandson or killing this nigga if that's what she was on. So, you know, push come to shove. And I go to the funeral and everything. Everybody like, he had been missing from his family for like eight months. But every time I seen him, he would always come from Kissimmee to my crib. Like, dude, I got a new idea. He always had a new idea of how to make crack. I can't even remember all the shit he had. So, I said, fuck, this nigga been dead that whole time. I'm riding around talking to a corpse and learning how to cook dope with a corpse and shit. So, naturally, I want to forget that fuck shit there, right? So, I'm like, what happened? Now, I see a couple of the, the, the Spanish people that was in their little spiritual sect that was digging up the bodies and shit, using them for various ritualistic purposes and shit. So, I seen them. So... They said, they was all making jokes, talking about, did you get one of his bones? And they laughing, ha, 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 ha. Yes, I got the leg bone, the femur bone. Yank that bitch right out. Yeah, we're going to use him. We're going to have that bitch working for us. Yuck, 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 yuck. This all at the funeral. Everybody laughing. I'm like, the fuck just happened? So I'm like, okay, this is some shit that grandma ain't taught me, I ain't into. I'm out of this bitch. So as I'm walking out, Get this. Keep in mind, I done took the money. I done took the dope off of him and all that shit. There, I ain't sold none of the shit. So as I'm walking out, one of the dudes said, you got his dope? I said, yeah, I still got the bitch dope, man. Can I get it? I said, yeah, meet me to my car. So I hand him the dope. I ain't stupid. I ain't giving up the bread. Now. He said, okay, thank you. I give him the dope that was used with the original young boy that was in Mortimer's body. They start pumping the shit around Kissimmee. I mean, yeah, Kissimmee 
in uh, Cimarron area from Cimarron all the way to the semi area like that. Somehow it just got entangled with the Hispanic population. That's when the explosion of the B-boy happened here in Central Florida people. Everybody was acting like a B-boy, the big hats, the, the funny talk, using the word yo, son, and done. I think them people were selling so much of that crack from that boy that originally got killed in the drive-by that they used. That boy was in Mortimer's body and he was trying to get back every little piece of him and he just couldn't rest because he just wanted to live and shit. I, I don't know how this going on, even know what y'all gonna take for this story, man, but I'm telling you some real shit. The B-Boy era started I think, personally, here in Orlando, Kissimmee, Cimarron area, because of the dude that got killed in the shootout with Mortimer, and who Mortimer used his ground-up bones to make crack cocaine or some kind of powder drug. Say what you want, nigga. I'm a believer. Now, I'm finna leave this bitch right here because I know y'all gonna have some questions. Everybody, I'm tight. Telling you motherfuckers, sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction, but it's the truth, no doubt. All right, everybody, be careful out there, cocaine cowboys and cowgirls. Stay safe.